Let's now put together the entity relational diagram. Now, an entity relational diagram, or ERD, uh, sometimes when you say something backwards, it, it makes more sense. An entity relational diagram is a diagram of the relationships between the entities. You might recall that we had four of them. So let's look at them, putting them into what I call ERD standard form. And the standard form is to create a box and put a line this way. The line on top will hold the primary key. So let's take each one one at a time. We had orders, which had a primary key of order number. You might recall that we had left in that entity order date. And a foreign key pointer called customer number, and I notated it as a foreign key. So that was one entity. Then I had an items entity, which had a primary key of item number and had price and name as its key, as its uh, non-keyed attributes. And then I had a concatenation from the first normal form failure, which was called order number. item number, and what was left was the quantity, and we called this order items. And then finally, I had customers, and the primary key was customer number, customer name, and the customer address. Please remember, just for clarification here, but I am not breaking down address to its first line address, second line address, zip code, and state. For the purposes of this example, it really is not necessary. So what we have now is a view of the four entities. The fact that we thought we had one file, in effect, that we had four. The next thing is to create now the relationships. And the way I go about it is, it's really very simple. Relationships are formed by common data elements between entities. So let's draw lines where there is a relationship. You will note that order has a relationship with order items because they have a common element. You'll know items has a relationships here because of the commonality of items. And because of the foreign key, we forced a relationship between customer and orders. Interesting diagram. When you simply look at it, it tells you a lot. The flow of data tells you a lot about a system. For example, the way a customer gets an item is through an order. Notice that customers cannot have a relationship with items directly without going through an order. So be cognizant of the fact that understanding how to read an entity relational diagram tells you a tremendous amount about how to indeed read the way a business operates. Not at a detail level, but at a high level. The next thing we need to do is look at something about the relationship, something we call cardinality. Cardinality tells us about the specifics of quantities between the relationships. And it is here where we come up with something called the crow's foot method. Now, there are a few others, but for this lecture, I'm going to use the crow's foot method. And what that means is that the many sign will look like this, which is, of course, the form of a crow's foot. Now, let's get more specific about it. And let me go through an example that I feel will properly explain a somewhat challenging situation for you. Suppose I was standing on top of this entity. Here I am standing on top of the entity, and I put my hand over my eyes, and I go down, and I pull up one of the records in this file. No matter what record I would come up, I would certainly have an order. Now, if I were to take that order and I would look down on this order item, what would be true about how many items would be associated with this particular order? And the answer is one. I'd have to have at least one or item associated with an order, or else it wouldn't be an order. So I put here a sign which stands for one. But I could also have many. How many? Many. And what is the sign for many? 
a crow's foot. So what this now says is an order can have one too many order items. That is cardinality. I'm not just showing that I have a relationship. I'm showing something more specific about that relationship. Now, if I were to jump down here, put my hand over my eyes, go down into the cylinder, and pick up an order item, and look back up at its associated order, what would I know? The first thing <clears throat> is any order item that I picked up in this file, the order number must be here. It must be here. And it can only be there once. I cannot have more than one order number of the same order number here. And this became known as the one and only one. Now the way this is said in the industry, is the way it's said by database designers, is that one and only one order can have one too many order items. We call this the cardinality of the relationship. Something that you also should know is that most products, like Irwin or Popkin System Architecture, case tools in which you create this relationship, when you do something called schema generation, which is where the software case tool actually generates the SQL code to form the database, that this relationship will indeed produce the constraints called referential integrity in the product. What this says is that if I try to insert an order number here, the system will require me Oracle, Sybase, Informix, SQL Server 7, DB2, etc. will require me to enter at least one order. That's very important. It'll also restrict me from just going to this database and inserting an order number that's not here. So let's go further with this. Let's now jump to this one. And we see here that items, looking down on an order item, if I picked up an, an item, would it have to be in this database? Well, the answer is no. Because I could have created an item that nobody ordered. So it might be zero. But could the item appear in here? Could, this, could item A appear in many different order items? The answer is yes. How many? Many. So unlike this example, it is zero to many, which means Oracle will allow me, or any other relational databases, would allow me to insert an item and not require me to insert an order unlike this situation, which requires at least one. And once again, if I were to come down here and look up, any item that I found would have to be one and only one. What we're beginning to see here is a very predictable sequence which suggests that the relationships in a normalized database are one and only one to either zero or one too many. Now let's go down to our last one. A customer can appear in many orders. Therefore, the crow's foot goes this way. But it is also true that a customer may not have ordered anything. And this is known as an entity relational diagram with full cardinality, which will eventually generate referential integrity at the database level.